Hey everyone, how are you doing? So I've received this request from one of my patrons about um, uh, this old uh, kind of classical effect, like the video distortion thing uh, of a mesh using a video. I don't even know if this effect has a name. Uh, I think yes, but uh, I don't. Uh, I, I don't know it. <laughs> and I already made uh, like tutorials on how to do that, but uh, never completely on the GPU using shaders. So this is kind of the shader version of this effect. So this effect works completely on the GPU and uses only textures and shaders. It never touches the CPU with matrices or jit gen. And this allows us to use big videos and also, for example, a big, a lot of vertices. In this case, I'm using 1 million vertices for this grid shape. And you can see the level of details is really, is really great. That's a frog video and uh, it looks really good. So let's see how we can do that uh, in Max using shaders. Good. So I'm going to delete uh, these two things and we're going to start completely from scratch. Of course, I will just have my JIT world and the GGL camera with JIT, uh, with JIT Anim drive attached so we can move the, um, the camera around, the virtual camera. And that's basically it. So the first thing we, we need is a JIT movie object with output texture 1. Uh, because we want to output textures, as we say, we don't want to output matrices. We only work want to work on the GPU of the computer, and uh, we want to say probably volume zero. Uh, we'll just choose a movie file, uh, one of the built-in movie files in Sign Max, which is chickens.mp4. And uh, good. If we attach a GP window to that, we can see that it's already playing. We got the chickens. Looks good. Then the next thing we need it's GGL grid shape which draws to my world, which is called game. And uh, shape, we want to have a plane, for example. We can use any shape, but for the moment, we're going to use a plane as it was, uh, as I showed you before. And I'm going to give it dimension, I don't know, like 200 by 200 for a starter. Cool, so that's our plane. Um, you know what? I'm going to create a digital texture. Uh, the draws to game, give it a name. I'm going to call it text zero. And then I'm going to pass the video uh, inside this texture, just to store it inside the texture that we can then attach to uh, to our GGL grid shape. So, if I say texture, if I set the texture attribute of the GGL grid shape to text zero, then we can see that basically uh, we got the texture rendering on the mesh. It's a bit dark because we should give it color one one one, which is white, so it looks exactly like um, like it should. Good, and uh, I want to show you a trick. Now, I don't want to write the shader from scratch. So what I'm going to do is to send the message get GL3 shader to the GGL grid shape. And I'm going to copy the shader that it gives us because since I attached the texture to the GGL grid shape, the shader that is automatically created by Max, it's going to contain some lines that allow us to read the texture. So we got already a bit of the job done. Cool, so I'm going to Control A, Control C, I'm going to close that. I'm going to open a Visual Studio Code file. Uh, I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to paste everything inside it. I'm going to highlight the syntax as GLSL. This you can do by downloading a GLSL package for um, Visual Studio Code. Good. I'm going to save that inside this folder where I have the patch, so they are both in the same patch. I'm going to save it as uh, um, movie dist. GPU toot.jxs, the file format is jxs, uh, in max to read shaders. Great, so we got the file. Amazing. Uh, let's now clean it a bit. Uh, no, actually what we're gonna do is to create uh, a GGL shader object, uh, which is going to draw to our rendering context. I'm going to give it as the file name. Uh, move it is gpu toot.jxs. Good, so you should have found it. Uh, let's see if I actually double click on it. It's going to open it automatically in Visual Studio Code. This I've set from the preferences. Oh, and by the way, we are in GL3. So sorry, I should have mentioned that, but we are in GL3. So the shader syntax is going to be the shader syntax for GL3. Good. So let's see what do we have here. Simulated uh, auto generated shader. We can uh, cut the description. The description we don't need it. Texture matrix, model view projection matrix, color we need. And basically, we need everything. You know what we 
don't need actually is the model view projection matrix because we are going to divide the model view projection matrix in the two matrices the model view and the projection matrix so we can better modify the vertices in uh, in model view space in camera space so by transforming it through the model view matrix and then we're going to use the projection matrix on the modified vertices to transform the coordinates to projection coordinates and if you didn't understand anything from what i just said i suggest you to check my tutorial on my website about matrix spaces inside the glsl inside opengl in general this has nothing to do with jitter matrices this is a matrix for transformations so geometrical transformation like uh, like scaling and rotation and translating and this is what uh, the text uh, the model view projection matrix and the, the matrices inside GLSL are about. So in any case, let's uh, um, get these matrices inside the shaders. So we want a model view matrix, which we are going to take by the state uh, model view matrix. Then we need uh, another param name. Uh, we're going to call this projection matrix uh, of type mat4 as well state this is also a variable that max provides for us the opengl implementation inside max provides for us so this is the projection matrix that's why uh, we call it state because it's provided by max good then we need to bind them so we're going to bind them to the vertex program so this is the model view matrix here and this is going to be the projection matrix okay they are both bind to the vertex program because we wrote vp good let's go now inside our vertex program i'm going to clean it a bit we don't have a model view projection matrix anymore now we have divided into the model view matrix and the other one uniform mat for projection matrix <coughs> good so we got position color text card right uh, as an output we want the jit vertex to output the color of the shape which is basically the color that we write here inside uh, the attribute color that we write in the ggl grid shape great uh, library functions it's nothing uh, right so we can uh, we can clean a bit the the code the automatically generated code here right and then let's check the fragment shader oh uh, where is it here so let's clean it a bit Right. Uh, so we can see that the texture is already set inside the fragment shader. We want actually to bind it both to the vertex shader and the fragment shader because we need to get the texture data also inside the vertex shader to modify the vertices position. So, right. So what we're going to do, um, first let's actually assign this shader to the shape. So to check if we get errors. So let's give it a name to the shader file, uh, to the shader object and call it shady. And then let's say here, shader shady, right? And it got black because we got some errors. Let's see what we got. And the final variable model view projection matrix. Okay, so it's still lingering somewhere. So let's actually get rid of it, exactly. So GL position now is being transformed by the model view projection matrix. We actually want to transform it by the projection matrix multiplied by the model view matrix multiplied by the position. And then it's basically the same as uh, multiplying them directly by the model view projection matrix, which is just a, a composition of these two matrices. Good. But actually, we want to, what we want to do is to create a new variable, which is a back four and call it like modified vertices. And that's actually going to be equal to the model view matrix multiplied by our position. And we're going to multiply that by the projection matrix. So modified, whoops modified vertices right that's basically the same i didn't really do much uh, now we just need to get the texture information inside the vertex shader so i'm going to bind it the texture which is bound by default to the fragment program i'm going to bind it to the vertex program as well so now we can have it as well inside the vertex program so i'm going to copy oops so i'm going to copy this line from the fragment program go inside the vertex program at the top pass it here and we get our texture so actually actually let's get the texture coordinate first and then let's create a new variable vector 4 which is going to be texture values so vector 4 because every texture has by default four planes like a matrix with four planes so has four values in every cell which means we need a, a vector 4 to read the values from those uh, cells 
So we are going to sample them using the texture function, which is like the sampler function inside JitGen. And we are going to sample text zero. That's the name of our sampler file, uh, sampler variable. It's called sampler to direct text zero. Uh, we're going to use our texture coordinates to sample that. So JIT out dot text code zero. Good. So now we got the values of uh, the texture inside this texture val. Uh, variable. Now what I want to do is to actually to get the luminance from this texture. So what is actually the brightness from the various frames. So in order to do that, I'm simply going to Google and how to get the luminance from uh, RGB, transform this to luminance. It's basically like the RGB to Luma object does in, um, in Max. So what we want to do is basically to copy these values. I'm just going to copy that, close actually that going to paste it here and uh, great so this is the values for which we have to modify uh, to which for which we have to multiply um, the colors so let's create a new float variable let's call it luma so this is going to be texture val dot r multiplied by 0 0.2126 plus texture val dot green multiplied by 0 0.7152 right plus texture val dot p multiplied by 0 0.0722 and i'm i'm doing that because basically these are values that are known to be uh, to give kind of a nice black and white uh, um, translation for a color image uh, to the human eye so it's basically it's known that if you multiply uh, rgb values for these numbers then you get a black and white image that is kind of uh, uh, it's kind of pleasant for the human eye or it's kind of how the human eye expects it to be or something like that so good now we're going to modify those vertices using the luma so we're going to do like this modified vertices plus equal a vector four which is zero for the x zero for the y we're going just to modify the zeta uh, for which we're going to use the luma value and also zeta for the w component so let's get if i save good um i mean not really uh, that's not really what i wanted to do actually what i wanted to do is to get this vector and multi and sum it actually to this to the position which is in model space so this is the position in model space and then we sum it to the to the values and then actually after we sum it uh, uh, to the to the values then we modify uh, multiply it by the model view matrix so first sum then multiply by model view matrix that's that's correct okay right uh, we got the effect uh, this was pretty fast this was pretty easy and looks pretty cool uh, i want to add just a little um, a little nice thing which is basically we can multiply the color value by the luma to get kind of a sense of uh, shadow where the where the frame where the video is kind of less bright we get these kind of darker colors so this works because in the we are passing these uh, uh, through the vertex shader to the fragment shader with the uh, jit per vertex uh, color variable and then we are using this uh, jit in color as, uh, as as the color and then we are basically multiplied as by the color by the color of the texture so that's why it uh, that we can uh, basically pass the value from the vertex shader to the fragment shader and it's going to look like this so uh, that's basically it uh, let me just get uh, another video just for fun whatever um looks good let me get another one just for more fun. Uh, for example, this is going to probably be very dramatic. Yeah, right. And yeah, this was it. Uh, as I said, we can really go crazy with the amount of vertices we want to have. I'm going to go with one million vertices. Uh, okay, this video is not really doesn't really make give so much satisfaction, but uh, yeah, this this is a bit better. Uh, if you don't want to have it a bit darker, you can also remove that. It's actually not really not really a thing, right? This looks also nice. Uh, if you want to add the light to that, then you should uh, basically start with the shader from the GGL material, uh, which is a, a bit more complex. It's not really complicated, but it's a bit more complex. So I'm going to show you, I'm, we are going to show that in uh, some future videos probably. So that was it. Hope you found it useful. I hope you are starting to get kind of familiar with um, GLSL coding in Max. It offers really a lot of possibilities. It's easy to implement, it's fast, and it's very performant. So there's no reason to not use GLSL in Max. 
Uh, let me know what you think uh, in the comment section. If you like the video, it would be great if you put a like to the video and subscribe to the channel, uh, help the channel grow. Check my Patreon for more patches and stuff. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching and uh, see you soon. Ciao.